Devil movie. Old Sess was a hell of a fight trainer, but the boys eventually broke free from his iron grip. At the Los Angeles Forum, Troy had another Aussie, Charlie Gergen, in his corner when he ripped apart Kenya's Olympic gold medalist, Robert Wangila. While Troy earned three world title fights by his late 20s, Sydney's slick Renato Cornet beat some of the best too, including this rugged Brazilian, Francisco Thomas de Cruz, in 1989. Graham Spike Cheney came away from the Seoul Olympics with a silver medal. The Lithgow boxer losing to Russian Vyacheslav Yanovsky. But he got his revenge at Hungbush in Sydney here a year later. Fennec, meanwhile, overwhelmed the best featherweights in the world, including the tricky Georgie Gogo Navarro in 1988. For the Marek Filmola, that was as good as it got. Fennec's next featherweight title defence was a marathon slog with Marcos Villasana, another Mexican who let him go south of the border. After Fennec won a unanimous decision, he announced his retirement. He told the world it was his crook hands. We had one fight where we were, I was able to sit around and show the kids after and just caught up and you know, I'm proud of what I've done. But it was more than that. It wasn't because of pain or injury. It was because I was very, very distressed and I'd been put through a lot of emotional pain from my promoter and from our IMG prior to that fight. With Fennec out of the way, Jeff Hitman Harding strutted his stuff. He won a silver medal at the 1986 Edinburgh Commonwealth Games. A few months later, he turned pro, blasting out Tommy Roberts at the Marrickville RSL and chopping down the Ugandan-born Emmanuel Otti. Argentina's Jorge Salgado had a heart as big as his hooter, but that couldn't stop Harding's relentless march. Then came Harding's biggest test against big-hitting Don Lee. Halfway through the fight, Harding sliced the American's lip to the horror of referee Ray Wheatley. She shoots straight through, and that's the first time I'd seen that. And, um, but uh, I kept my eye on it during the, the fight. Um, and uh, they were sort of visited their corner on uh, two occasions. And uh, the fighter was keen to carry on. In 1989, Harding got his big break. Canadian Donnie Lalonde pulled out of a world title fight with the ancient world champ Dennis Andres, and promoters in Atlantic City needed a replacement. In Jeff Harding, they got more than they bargained for. He cut the pasting for the first five rounds, but his massive heart kept pumping. The guts and the courage, determination, and the terrific desire that he had to be chairman of the world came through that day. It was... Um, you know, marvellous to be associated with an athlete that could really dig the way that Jeff Harding did. Harding stormed home. In the last round, the hitman was a mile behind, but he made Andres cave in. No performance has better captured the courage and spirit of Australian boxing. Harding lost a rematch in Melbourne, and in 1990, Andres travelled to Adelaide to fight Guy Waters. Guy just didn't fight hard enough. The best good thing beaten, I think I've seen. He should have beaten Andres from here. Timbuktu. Jeez, that was a wasted opportunity. You know, he's, all he had to do was box him. You know, he just had to throw a punch. Not just close up shop and so I'm going to survive. Guy had plenty of family support in the corner, but unfortunately they weren't in the ring. The winner, by unanimous decision... Andre's celebrations were short-lived. Harding won back the title in London a few months later. Fennec didn't stay retired for long. All the stars were ringside in Las Vegas in 1991 when he went after a fourth world title against Azuma Nelson. Fennec was rocked early but came home like a Carl Lewis. Nelson was glad to hear the final bell. Fennec was not glad to hear the decision.
of the hunt and the love and the desire that I had for the sport of boxing. I said it's not an excuse. I mean, I went back out there, thought I could do it again, but I obviously couldn't. But I know for a fact that I was never the same after that fight. The decision not only rocked Fennec, but Australian boxing fans. The Marrickville Mauler boxed on for another five years, but never won another big fight. Still, the aura of supreme confidence and invincibility Fennec displayed in the late 80s will always linger.